and welcome to another episode of The Sake Notes. Yes, we're back once again. I am John. I'm Michelle. And today we've got three uh, very interesting sakes that we want to talk about. And but we've we, got a twist on the theme. Yeah, we want you to help me help us figure out what is the same about all three of these sakes. So we have, um, this is Sekio Omachi. Uh, it's a Junmai Ginjo. This is Maboroshi, which means mystery. Uh, and it's also a Junmai Ginjo. And this is Joto Daiginjo. Uh, well, Joto is a is a importer distributor of sake, uh, at least in the New York area. I assume they're elsewhere too. So press pause, think about it. We'll give you a hint. All three of these sakes are from Hiroshima. So if you've got Hiroshima, you're halfway there. We've got a deeper theme to this episode. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we're going to take it one step further and say that these are actually all made in the same brewery. Yeah. Um, for a long time, I always thought that like the brewery and the sake often had the same name. So like Nambu Bijin was one of the first sakes I got really got introduced to and like Sawanoi and stuff like that. And it was always like the name of the brewery was the name of the sake. And I always thought that it was just how it worked. Um, later on, I realized that, that wasn't always the case. Things like Dasai, very, very popular sake. Very easy to recognize. You've got their name down the front. Like you always know yeah. a Desai sake. But that's not the name of the brewery. The brewery mm. is a Asahi brewery. Mm. Um, and this came up when I actually independently really liked all three of these sakes. And then one day I realized that they were all from the same place. I did not intend to find that out. They all look so different. Mm. Of course, you've got your green and your brown. You've got a shorter size. You've got like completely different characters on the front Mm -hmm. of the bottles this one is like with the distributor label it's like yeah. not even like with they the do a really great job i love what uh, johto does with their designs those are so cool looking um but the interesting stuff is like so th this omachi obviously it uses omachi rice uh the maboroshi uses a, a local uh, hiroshima rice and so does the johto daiginjo but the yeast these two use the same yeast, and this one uses an apple yeast. Ooh. So you get like a really weird cross section. There's a really interesting like like Venn diagram that could be made out of these sakes. <laughs> I love that. I love because I feel like when you try things that are, you know, so similar with diff one different variable, you're able to kind of pin down what makes that sake special. Like the water, you can really start to try to pick out the, the flavor of the rice or the flavor of the yeast. Yeah. Or um, Love it. Should we? Do you have a particular order that you want to start? I, can, in? I think we can go in any way because these are all really, really nice, and they're all a little bit different, which is like super fun. Um, the Joto Daiginjo is a fifty percent milled. It uh, uses an apple yeast. Its uh, sake meter value is five, and it is using um, Hatanishiki rice, which is, I believe, a local delicacy over in Hiroshima. And you guys know how much I love Hiroshima sake, yeah. so I was all about this theme. <laughs> That's how I lure her into my more <laughs> esoteric themes. It's like, what if it's all from Hiroshima? She's like, oh. I think this is brilliant. I think this is, you know, something that someone who is starting to get into sake can run into in the store. Totally. I think it's a, it is a, is a major deal because you might find, like, uh, in your head you might think, like, oh, well, I really like, let's say you had Maburoshi once. And you might be like, I want to find more sake that's going to remind me of Maboroshi or something that's like Maboroshi. Uh, but knowing that these other two um, brands out there are actually from the same brewery is going to help. I imagine they're going to, when we, as we do our tasting, I think we're going to find that they have very similar uh, characteristics. I think this is a great example considering how completely different all of these bottles look. Yep. And the labels. The back of these two are similar, though. You've got a Well, the, the back labels, though, are, they're, oh, they're provided all by yeah. the distributor. So yeah. they're imported by Joto. This one looks a little so, different. And by, by distributor, I mean the importer. It's a, depending on what state you're in, that line gets a little fuzzy sometimes. In New York, the distributor and the importer are not the same. So in this case, they're the importer. Okay. So should we start right to left? Uh, would that be having us start with the yes. Joto? Yes. All right. Let's do it. Okay. So okay. we have... Strawberry. We do. Strawberries, if you guys are paying attention, are now the our go-to tasting uh, pairing item. You go ahead and taste. All right. Well, I'm just, just going to do it straight with that. Sure. Okay. But well, we have strawberries, we have some nuts, and then we have pretzels again. I want to get into cheese, but I feel like that's like <laughs> high, high, next level pairing. So we're trying to stick to just like basic palate cleansing snacks and, of course, secret strawberries. 
Mm, that's wonderful. I, this was like when I when I had Ooh. this is when I was like whole. That, this was like the third piece of the puzzle. I was like, man, this is really great. Uh, and then I like, like a little bit into my fascination with the Joto Daginjo that I realized that it was actually uh, from the, from the same brewery as Sekio. And then after that, I realized it was the same brewery as Mamoroshi. The first thing that popped into my head when I tasted this one is just like fresh. Yeah. Like it just tastes pop and like mm -hmm. fresh in your face. I feel like this is a great summer sake, great like outside, sunny, like, you know, enjoying summer vacation. It is refreshing. It is yeah. relentlessly refreshing. Yeah. It's, it's, a, um, it's light. I feel like it has sort of a richer middle to it. Hmm. What do you think? I mean, there, I do, I do definitely understand the, like, where you're coming from and the richness. Mm -hmm. But that ending is just so smooth. It's it so is nice. It's really, it's really like good. It's like a, ending. it's like a reverse, reverse cliff, I guess. Right? <laughs> like a it plateau. Uh, well, no, well, I guess not. It would like be a, a plateau. step. A step. Okay. Yeah. So that one's good. I like it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the Maburoshi now. Okay. That's great. Uh, Maburoshi for me is. I don't remember the first time I had Maburoshi, but I remember the first time I remembered Maburoshi. Uh, there's this little sushi place that we go to in Shinjuku every couple of years, and they have a very small uh, sake menu, but it's a good sake menu, and they usually have uh, Maburoshi bottles, so we usually buy one of those with our sushi lunch, uh, and it, it goes really well with like pretty much everything we order. Okay, so I want you to taste this one and compare your thoughts to the first one before I say anything. I don't want to sway mm -hmm. your Well, again, yeah, same rice, notes. different yeast. So, hmm. Because I feel like I sort of immediately got the similarity. Mm. I mean, yes. I feel like that, it's that richness, like that rich, almost a caramel mm, flavor, a but bit. like much more elongated. Whereas this one I feel like was kind of like pop in the middle and then smooth. I feel like this one elongates that rich flavor. Well, milling on this one's also, uh, this is 50%, so it's 58. So it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit more refined, not a lot more. Um, but it's like, yeah, this is nice. Like it's, it's got a different vibe to it. Like you're kind of, uh, you can, this you one... can tell they share some heritage, but it is a, it, you wouldn't necessarily uh, immediately know that they came from the same place. This one probably holds up to food a little bit better because it has that full richness throughout, whereas this one sort of doesn't just move this. Hmm. Yeah. Ooh, let me try it with strawberries. Actually, it went really nicely with the pretzel. Ooh. Yeah. Strawberries are cheating. Everything goes better with strawberries. Definitely. And strawberries continues. are summer fruit, so sticking with the summer theme. Hmm. Okay, last one. Oh man, yeah, the strawberries and the and the Marlboros are great. Do you have any milling or alcohol percentage info for these? I do. So the the Sekio, um is obviously it's using omachi instead of the uh, instead of the Hiroshima rice, the uh, Hatanishiki. It's fifty five percent. So it's actually milled a little bit more than the Marlboroshi, but only like three percent. So it's not like changing a whole lot. These are all like kind of in the same ballpark milling wise. But the Zomachi is going to bring a very different profile, I suspect. What do you got? Yeah. I thought this one was the lightest and the smoothest of the three. Mm. I tried it with a, what is this, an almond? I tried it with an almond. Didn't think it went too well. I thought the almond was like too, mm. almost made it bitter. So this tastes definitely lighter I mean, flavors. De very, very different. It's a completely different profile. And it's, it's also like equally great. Mm -hmm. um, now, this uses the same uh, yeast as the Maburoshi, which is, um, not to get too sake geek, but it's it's a number nine, which is a very, very popular yeast. Um, but two completely different um, rices. But again, same water in all cases, because this, they're coming from the same place, same brewery. So I feel like these two are sort of the furthest apart flavor-wise. So for someone who wants something a little bit bolder, maybe you're having uh, heavier food or more food, this might be a better choice. Whereas this one is much lighter and more refined. You would want probably lighter foods or just by itself. I think the, the Johto is the by itself champion. Like the Daiginjo, it is just so 
like you like you said, it's just like it's relaxing, it's refreshing. It is it's, a summer day. It is you know it's really really nice. So fresh. Uh, omachi usually goes pretty well with food, but I think this is a little lighter than most omachi sakes I've had. Did you do it, of course, with the strawberries? Uh, I did not yet. I'm about to do it with a pretzel though. <laughs> so for this one, I think my just initial first thoughts are fresh, rich, and this one I get light and smooth. Just my initial first taste. Hmm. It's interesting because it, the Sekio is. I, and in cheating a little bit, I've had their Junmai, which is not Omachi, and there's a there are notes about it that are similar to this, even though it uses uh, even though it uses Omachi rice mm -hmm. that are not present in the other two necessarily, and it's it's just so interesting again like one place is making all these different flavors, and it's like super cool. Like uh, then we we mentioned Dasai earlier, and for me, um, a lot of their sake has a very very similar notes to it. Like when you're having like Desai 50 versus like Desai 39 versus 23, you can really taste the kind of the common language between them and the, you know how there's like, oh, this is like, I can totally see how this is like the same place made this and they just, you know, this is this is their more more um, exclusive style or you know, more expensive, uh, more tasty in some cases. Uh, but this really, each one has its own kind of personality. Which I think is kind of cool. I think this is a great cross section to choose from. I'd recommend any of these, of course. Mm. I, I love the idea of doing of, of I love the idea of having discovered this and being like, oh, I need to tell people about that. I need to like make sure people know that just because you see a label doesn't necessarily mean that you've seen everything from that brewery. I wonder how many other examples. I'm sure there are tons of other examples, but you know, our friends in New York, like, can you think of any other specific examples? of a couple of sakes that look very different, present very different labels, but are all from the same brewery. Because um, I would love to do taste tests for those too and sort of feature those labels as well. Mm. Hey, you know what? The strawberry and the Sekio Amachi do not go well together. I have finally found something the strawberries did not pair. I don't know about with. that. I thought it was fine. I, I might be biased. You, you are. I'm very biased. I love strawberries. That's true. I'll do it with a nut instead. Final thoughts? Mm. Hold on a moment. <laughs> okay, I think we know which one's your favorite. Mm -hmm. Actually, they're all really great. I, I don't have a favorite. I just... They're all different. They're all for different things. Totally. This is making me really look forward to being in Hiroshima later this year. <laughs> I'm like, yes, all the Hiroshima sake is wonderful. We do have a tasting coming up next week, June... The second, I believe? Tuesday. Tuesday. June the Tuesday. First Tuesday in June at Rabbit House. We're doing a the Saki Notes at Rabbit House set. And as you might remember, this is my month, so I got to pick my favorite sakes to kind of put a set together. What are we calling it? My Shell Omakase? Yep. June the 5th, by the way. June the 5th. Because calendar applications so are very So mark your calendar useful. if you want to see. What do we have? We have a Namagenshu. We have... Do we get end up with a... Sparkling Nagori? Yes, uh, the Amabuki Sparkling Nagori, the Naruto Tai Nama Genshu Ginjo. And do you remember the last one? See, I had so many ideas that I can't remember where we ended up. Hmm. Oh, uh, of course, Hiroshima Sake. Yes, it is definitely Hiroshima Sake. It is uh, Biho. Uh, and as you did head up that Women of Sake tasting we did last year, uh, it has a woman Toshi. So some of my favorites, special select set. I'd love to have you there and share my favorites with you. Mm -hmm. June 5th. June 5th. From... If you're in New York, we should probably mention that. Like, oh, Rabbit yeah, House. it's only in New York We're City. in New York. Rabbit House is in New York. <laughs> uh, I don't think we mentioned that last episode. So if anybody watched it, we're like, where is it? What's a Rabbit House? <laughs> so, yeah. Now we've I guess done next output. month is your month? Uh, next month will be July, but it, but it'll be like probably around the fourth. So I don't know what we're gonna do. Mm. <clears throat> we'll mm. figure something out. I think I have some ideas. My month might end up being you know, August. Might end up being August since my birthday is at the end of July. Send your presents to the sake <laughs> notes. <at> my... <laughs> okay. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Final thoughts are like, I love that all the three all three of these sakes are wonderful in their own specific ways. Mm -hmm. They. They have they have some similarities to them, like definitely, but they don't 
like necessarily seem like they're all like the same. Like they all, they don't, they, they have very different characteristics and they are all delicious in their own way, mm-hmm. which is like super cool. Uh, and then, you know, that's kind of the key is like, don't necessarily look at the, just the label, find out uh, who brewed it and find out where, you know. Yeah. I'm surprised at the versatility of these three sakes. Like, you know, you've got your, your rich, your smooth and your light, and then your just like fresh, exciting sake. Like it's very different. It's, there's something for everyone, which I think is really exciting because when you're interesting sake to someone for the first time, like you don't really know where their tastes are going to lie. So being able to pull out so many different flavors just from one brewery alone, I think will help reach someone for the first time. Or if you're still growing your taste, or you want to try something new, like so many options. Yeah. All right. I think that's going to be it for us tonight. Thank you very much for joining us. You guys have a wonderful night. Enjoy your sake and come by. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.